MC uh, Nami found himself oh, one day oh, drifting through the internet. Is this the game section of Metacritic? Wait, what? Why is this on the same level as this? And this? Where is the consistency and what makes a game a masterpiece? Upon giving some thought to the question that is the title of this video, I think I know. And what I mean by said title is what makes Critic Bill and Critic Jill be inconsistent in what gets an oh-so-tasty 10 out of 10. Basically, why the heck is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 being hailed as the second greatest game of all time? So anyway, let's hop right into it, shall we? What I found is that critics give 10s based on one of three categories. Of course the game could excel in two, or even all of them. The first of these is the most classic of the bunch, in that it applies to film as well. I'm talking about being really artsy. It's basically trying to be the game equivalent of Citizen Kane, The Godfather, or 2001 Space Odyssey. These games include Shadow of the Colossus, Inside, or The Last of Us. Pretty much games that tell a story in such a way that makes an artist get a bit too excited. <laughs> now you may be saying to yourself, but I'll play games for fun. I remember when Reggie said, The game is fun. If it's not fun, why bother? And that brings me into the second category, which is indeed fun. fun. By fun, however, I don't mean, woohoo, I'm having fun at the playground. Fun. No, I'm talking about the sort of game that you think about before you go to bed. The sort of game that you look forward to playing when you get home. The sort of game that you can really enjoy investing time in. For me, these include Skyrim, Metal Gear Solid 5, the Mass Effect Trilogy, Yakuza, and Dark Souls. I should mention that being kind of artsy can make a game more fun, like Bioshock. The third category that some critics really look for is perfection. Usually this involves having some decades old formula perfected and refined over many years. I'm looking at you, Mario and Pac-Man. This category can apply to new games too, like sports games. Now I kinda take issue with applauding games just for being perfect. It's Pac-Man for crying out loud. It's like a flawless barn competing against the slightly dusty Taj Mahal. I hate dust. I don't want it building up in my home. The experience Pac-Man delivers just can't compete. Some people, they want an artsy art house game. Some people, they want a really fun, enjoyable game. And some weirdos want a perfect game for some odd reason, regardless of the experience it delivers. The problem here is that everyone gets the same score regardless of what they're looking for. So maybe what we need is three different scores at the end of every review. That way, everyone would know what new release is right for their taste. Hey, maybe the games that are ultra amazing would get perfect 10 on all of the scores. But in the end, I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon across all the critics universally. So until then, let's keep on pulling out our torches and pitchforks every time a critic gives us a score that doesn't align with ours. <laughs>